so um, I am going to walk you through the project paper. Um, now most if not all of you have had this checked or had a discussion with me already. If you are one of those people that still has it missing, if you are absent, if you're behind for any reason or need a reference, this is just a quick tutorial. So we are going to go to my classes. I'm just going to pick homeroom. They should all be the same. As a reminder, here are our um, activities that we have already done. Our assignments are already in our grade book. Um, and you can find your class kit codes and graphic organizers. So we are going to go to assignment and it literally says biomes project graphic organizer slash unit study guide. And we are going to open this file. Now, <clears throat> it says this will be due after class on Thursday, which means that was last Thursday. Um, we are using this to build our physical projects this week. So remember, we should be done with this. Now I'm going to download this. I'm going to download this and I'm going to open it. Now, if when you open your paper, it does not look like this, you should have Office 365 downloaded in your device. Um, if you don't or you cannot access this page, you need to email me. So I'm going to hit enable edit. And now I can type on this document. So the very first thing we do is write our name. So we're just going to pretend this age. And then we file, save as, you want to save things on this OneDrive. This OneDrive is given to you by the school and that saves everything in one location on the internet. It's not saved specifically to your computer, so if you switch computers you would lose it. It's in the internet, um, so you can access that anywhere. And you are going to name this underscore last name. Please do not write the word last name, write your last name. So this would say underscore Humphreys. Okay, so we're gonna save that and make sure that we're always saving. Make sure we're always saving. And you see it says saved and my last name has changed. So I know that's saved. Okay, number one, name of the biome that you are using on your project. Well, we have our graphic organizer and Ms. Humphreys, I lost that or I don't know where it is. That's okay. We're gonna go to digital sessions where it says graphic organizer right here. And here in lesson resources, you have to do this stupid open thing is your answer key with all of your biomes. So I'm just gonna open that for reference and I can choose tropical rainforest, temperate deciduous, taiga, desert, tundra, grassland, savanna, freshwater, estuary, or marine. I have 10 options. Now I'm gonna choose rainforest because that's what my examples are and let's be real, it's easy to spell. So I'm gonna do rainforest. And now it asks where in the world is your biome? Well, it literally just told me right here rainforest location around the equator. So I'm going to write near the equator. All right, now it says name the six levels of organization for Humphreys. So we know that it's old people can, or can't, excuse me, eat buttered beans or Optimus Prime can exile bumblebee. So that is organism population, community, ecosystem, biome, and biosphere. Um, next, we have pick an organism. Now, this is from your biome. So I'm in the rainforest. I'm going to pick a toucan. Nope, Ms. Humphreys can't spell toucan. Toucan. Hmm. Um, if you are in the desert, you can pick a um, animal that lives in the desert. I can't think of an example right now. But, I again, where could I find an animal that lives in my rainforest? Right here. Animals. A large variety. Sloths or jaguars. I'm going to go with sloths because I love me a sleuth. So we're going to use sleuths. Now it says define predator. We know the definition of predator in our review is an animal that eats other animals, so I'm not going to write that down. And then we look for the predator of the sloth. Now, this is where things get complicated, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Google. So this is a site called Google. It's free. You just hit Google. And in the Google bar, I'm going to ask, who eats sloths? That's it. Sloth's main predator is a jaguar. Perfect. Done. That was it. Jaguar. 
we're done. Question seven, define prey. Well, predator is the animal that does the eating. Prey is the animal that gets eaten. What is the prey of your organism, you ask? Gee, how will I ever find out? Sloths eat what? Leaves. Boom. Look at that. Um, they don't have incisors. They trim down leaves and snack. So we're going to just double check that sloths are herbivores because we know herbivores are things that eat meat. So we're going to write sloths prey. A little fancy one. And it says sloths are classic herbivores. Perfect. The sleuth is the herbivore. So we're going to write leaves. All right. Now it says in your energy pyramid below, list the name of the organism, the prey, excuse me, the pre prey right here, and the predator you just chose. Remember to include a producer. Well, our situation is different because we chose an herbivore. So the leaves are the producer. They are going to go at the bottom. They are going to go at the bottom. Now I need to type in this. I can either hit my draw tool, or if you don't have the updated version, you can enter a text box. And we'll just simply put right there that I have leaves as my bottom level producer. And I know that producers have 100% of the energy. So I'm going to mark that there because that's what question B asks me to do. Asks me to do the energy. So leaves. Now my first level consumer, my first level consumer will be my sleuth. That is the organism I chose. This will be my sleuth. And that I know I lose 90% of my energy. So this is going to have 10%. From 10% of 100 is 10. <laughs> On my secondary consumer, um, when Ms. Humphries isn't sure of her math all of a sudden. Okay, my secondary consumer is going to be the sloth's predator. And that was the jaguar. Jaguar. Um, yes, it's jaguar, but that's lame, so I said jaguar. And again, we are taking only 10%. So 10% of 10 is 1. Now, if you only have these three levels, you're like, well, Miss Humphreys, we need an apex predator. <laughs> yeah, we do. Great comment. We're going to go with humans because we're the worst. We have extincted everything. We have exiled most animals. So we're going to go with humans as the apex predator because we're awful. And 10% of 1 is 0.1%. So now I've done my instructions for A. Does it list the organism? Check. It's prey? Check. It's predator? Check. It says remember to include a producer, but I already have one. So I included an apex predator. And it says indicate how much energy is transferred to the next level. Right here, 100, 10, 1, and 0.1. I am now done with question nine. And page one is completed. Page two, list some abiotic factors of your ecosystem. Now, you know a means not and bio means life. So abiotic means factors that are not alive. Now I'll give you a sneak peek at your final it as uh, your final rubric project. It asks for climate and soil. So here's where I'm asking for basically the amount of rain and the amount of sun that your area gets. Notice right here I have an example rain and sun for the rainforest. If you have um, the desert, you have an abundance of sun. If you have fresh water, you have an abundance of drinking water. If you are in, um, excuse me, the temperate deciduous forest, your abiotic factors are going to be your soil, your really nutrient rich soil. So we can look at, again, our chart. We love that chart we did. It's like Ms. Humphreys gave us a reason to do it. Um, and it's going to tell you right here your climate and right here your, um, yeah, no, I don't have that. Sorry, guys. So right here's your climate. And then you're just going to have to obviously think of an abiotic, like your soil. Okay. So <clears throat> that's where you're listing that. Now, the word abundant means a lot of. So what I'm asking is the most abundant resource. So we literally go to our Google. Again, so complicated. Rainforest plus resource. And again, don't touch my spelling. So rainforest resources is we have bananas, papayas, mangoes, 
Um, right here we have, oh, look, medicines from different plants. So we would go with vegetation and plants. And the people competing for those resources, basically every competition is going to be humans versus the habitat. Or ha uh, hab people who live in the habitat. So the population. So basically, um, in the rainforest, humans are shipping out those bananas, papayas, and mangoes for us in coffee, for us to consume, but that is also the food source for the animals that live there. Um, so you're going to have the same thing in freshwater. We, that is 90% of the world's drinking water, but the fish also live in that water. So we can't drain those lakes. We have to create a water cycle. So that's what I mean. Basically, number 12 is going to be humans versus the population of animals. Now, to find mutualism, again, this is a review, so I'm not going to type this out. It's where one benefits and the other also benefits. So here's how to find an example. You go rainforest plus, again, I know I'm so complicated, guys, mutualism. Boom, right here. So insects such as ants and termites rely on each other, and they work to build team mounds where the group will live and hunt for food together. Right there. Uh, monarch butterflies travel in large groups, but oh, monarch butterflies traveling in large groups is not helpful because those are of the same species. So that is not a symbiotic relationship. You cannot put butterfly and butterfly. So an ant and a termite are a different species of insect. So we're going to use that. So ants and termites. Now I cannot write ants and termites. It literally says an example. I need to know what you're talking about. So um, they work together. I literally can type so fast when I'm not being recorded. Okay, they work together to build mounds and find food. All right, parasitism. We know that's where one benefits, the parasite, and one suffers or is hurt, the host. So I'm going to go rainforest plus parasitism. And Google's going to correct that for me. Um, so we have this lo loa loa, or leeches, fungi. So I'm going to go with leeches because I know what a leech is. So a leech is a blood-sucking, creepy thing. So we're going to go leeches on the animals. And lastly, we have commensalism. Now we know commensalism is where one benefits and one is unbothered, straight chillin'. So I'm going to find an example of commensalism. And here we are. The seeds travel on the animals with fur-like sloths. So I have the seeds get to move around and pollinate. The sloths, my sleuths, are unbothered. Unbothered. There we go. So now I'm on my cycles. Now I'm on nitrogen, carbon, and water. Now we know that nitrogen is found in the atmosphere. So I'm going to go on my draw cycle because it literally asks you to draw. So it says what biotic and abiotic factors please draw. So we're going to draw this out. Nitrogen is what I'm cycling. So we start with the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is found in the atmosphere. It's 70% of our, the air we breathe. But remember, um, humans' lungs don't like nitrogen, so we just immediately exhale it right back out. Our lungs say, oop, I don't know you, bye. Um, and then I, oop, goodbye. So the nitrogen has to get into our bodies in a digestible way. So the soil and the plants and the bacteria do us a real solid, and this nitrogen goes into the soil, goes into the soil, and then it goes out through plants. It goes out through plants. Now, how does it cycle, you ask? Great question. The plants are eaten by herbivores. Herbivores are eaten by omnivores. Omnivores are eaten by carnivores, etc., etc. And then when you die, your body decomposes and the nitrogen goes right back. So we're just worried about this food chain right here. Nitrogen goes into the soil, 
the soil grows, the nitrogen goes through the soil to the plants, and then the herbivores eat the plants. Okay, now once we have that general idea, an important fact to notice here is that it does say your biome. So the things that you need to be specific about are the soil, what plants, and what herbivores. You cannot have the word soil, plants, and herbivores. I'm in the rainforest. Mine must say nutrient-rich soil. If you're in the desert, yours would say nutrient-poor soil. My plants are going to be, my example was banana trees, and my herbivores are going to be the sleuths. So I would write here nutrient rich. Right here, I would draw um, and label a banana tree. And that's my tree. And then my herbivores here are going to be my sleuths, and I would draw or write sleuths here. So you have to have things specific to your biome. All right, last one or excuse me, next one, carbon cycle. Now, no matter what biome you're in, all carbon is gonna come from the same place. All carbon's gonna come from the same place. Now, carbon comes up through decomposers, through decomposers, when your body is dead. But also, humans are the worst. So we create an enormous amount of carbon by carbon dioxide. Now, a dioxide means it's attached to oxygens. We're not worried about that. There is still a carbon molecule, and that is just really unfortunate. So we are all going to draw the factories, the humans. And if you feel so brave, you may draw a car, but y'all make fun of my cars. So there it is. And then there's its exhaust. So we all create the same waste. The way it's picked up is it says um, a cycle, carbon cycle, it's picked up through plants. Remember our sweet little photosynthesis friends. So I'm in the rainforest, so I'm going to draw big green luscious trees here, a bunch of them. If I am in the desert, I'm gonna draw like a cacti or two, right? Like, I don't know how to draw a cactus. That, that looks like Texas upside down, whatever. You're gonna draw your luscious greens, right? And then when those plants die, they go back as decomposers and we start the cycle all over again, okay? So this plant needs to be specific. This is all the same. Your plant needs to be specific to your biome. Now the last one is the water cycle. So the water cycle we all know is precipitation and evaporation just over and over. So precipitation is any form of water falling from the sky. So if you're in the tundra, you are going to be drawing snowflakes, my friends. If you are in the tundra, if you are in the um, rainforest, you're going to be drawing a bunch of rain. If you're in the desert, you're going to be drawing just a little bit of rain. This cloud should be accurate with, or um, should accurately represent the amount of precipitation your biome gets. But Ms. Humphreys, how do I know the amount of precipitation my biome gets? Oh, look, it says right there. 80 to 400 inches compared to the desert that gets less than 10 inches. Um, so we have in the tundra, it literally says 10 inches of rain, but it's negative 40. So that's going to be snow. Um, anyway, so that's how you find out that. Then we know that our water is, the cycle is falling from the clouds to the ground. So we need the ground. This has to be specific to your biome. So when it says ground, ground, it needs to be representative of your ground. So that means I'm in the rainforest, I should have a bunch of green luscious leaves. I should, bleh, bleh, it's all green, it's green already. If I'm in the grasslands, my ground should be just grass. If I'm in the desert, my ground should be sand. This needs to represent, this ground needs to represent your biome. And lastly, we know that all water is evaporated eventually, precipitation evaporation. So we are gonna draw our water going back to the sun. And that's the same for everybody. All right, and that's it kiddos. That's all you had to do. Um, I did that in 20 minutes. So we worked on this for four class periods. Um, if you are completed, if you've completed this, please submit it on CTLS. 
let me show you how file save a copy so i want to save this here to onedrive save. you already have a file named this do you want to replace this yes now a key thing miss h did not just show you save this more often i have my auto save on so even if i were to have x'd out or my computer died i still have my changes um, but if you do not have this autosave feature, make sure you're saving this more often. So I'm going to close my application. I'm going to go back into my assignments. And I was on project. Now, here I have add attachment. This is where I'm going to upload my file. And here is where I'm going to choose my OneDrive. Here is my latest because I have it by date modified. If you have it by name, you can just hit right here and it shows your most recent. So I'm going to click that. Save and upload this draft. And once I see this here, I check it to make sure it's the file I want that is completely filled out. So I remember the last thing I did was those drawings. So I'm going to go check to see if the drawings are here. And they're there, so I'm good. I know that all my save, all my changes sa saved, and I'm going to hit submit to teacher. You're going to notice this green bar turns orange. That is when you're done, ladies and gentlemen. This single sheet of paper is part of a project that is worth 40% of your grade. If you have any questions, please let me know.